Durante una entrevista en el show de Chris Stefanik, el sacerdote católico Chad Ripperger dio a conocer una serie de revelaciones que los demonios hicieron durante diferentes instancias del rito del exorcismo, revelaciones que hicieron por orden de Dios y que no dejan de ser verdaderamente sorprendentes. El padre Ripperger comienza explicando lo que es un demonio y la profunda relación que hay entre la razón por la que Dios creó a cada uno y quien cada demonio es. When the angels were first created, um, I we might have talked about this on one of the prior interviews, but um, they had what the, the saints called the th first three instances. So the first instance is that they were angels created in a state of innocence and goodness, instantaneously in a full act of comprehension and knowing of who they are, who God was, etc. And then the second um, instance is they made their choice. Are you going to follow what God is asking you to do or not? And then the third instance is uh, the reward. So either they were given the beatific vision or they were immediately damned. And so, mm -hmm. and even in session, the demons will talk about these three instances. So, de so the demon is basically someone, he was a, a, an angel who was created good, who chose to refuse God's task, to the task that God was acting, asking him. Interesting though is, is that they're assigned task, who a demon is, his I personal identity, his very nature, his essence, is his assigned task. Wow. So when he refused his assigned task, it was a perfect act of self-hatred. So they hate themselves too, which is why when I hear people say, you're saying they hate themselves, I'm like, don't do that. That's what demons do. El padre Ripperger explica que información de este tipo es obtenida del demonio únicamente en un acto de voluntad de Dios al ser necesario para un exorcismo en particular. Además de hacer una pregunta, el exorcista debe hacerla en el nombre de Cristo o por el poder de la Inmaculada Concepción, o en este caso por la humildad con la que Jesucristo sufrió sus heridas. Started bawling, so we, I was forcing him to, to consider certain pa aspects of Christ's passion. And he said the thing that hurt him the most in Christ being willing to be pierced five times um, wasn't the actual physical pain, it was the humility with which he allowed it to happen. That's what crushed the demon when he would just think of it. El Padre también explica cuál fue la naturaleza del pecado de los demonios. That God gave him this assigned task, that's who their nature mm -hmm. was. But they also perceived in that totality of seeing everything that there was this other good that was above them that wasn't proper to their nature. And so they had to be willing to, to not pursue that, not want it, to basically, to be wow. willing to put that aside. Technically speaking, it means that they had to sacrifice it to God. El padre explica que finalmente cada demonio se condenó por rehusarse a sacrificar su propia voluntad ante Dios por lo que ese acto fue un acto contra la religión. That's where the malice comes in because they chose this lesser good over God who's the greater good. Una de las cosas más sorprendentes que gracias a la voluntad de Dios se nos ha revelado por medio de estos exorcismos es que Satanás, Lucifer y Belzebú son la misma persona, pero se manifiesta de maneras diferentes. The interesting thing is is though that they manifest very differently. So as I mentioned, Satan is putting on descript, but he's a habitual liar. But when you get to Beelzebub, he manifests in a very distinctive way in every case I've ever had him. Lucifer, on the other hand, will never manifest the same way in any case I've ever seen him, which I've seen him in about four or five cases. Is at a certain point I had Beelzebub in a case, and at a certain point during the session, God commanded him to tell me something, and, and just out of the blue, he just looks at me and he says, I'm the inversion of the Holy Ghost. And then, boom, he checks out. I couldn't get him back to the surface. Wow. I'm like, what does that even mean? And I knew, I had known from my research and studies and um, that two things. One is that exorcists say they, they manifest differently and so they actually thought they were different demons. And then, but also, the, but the fathers of the church are very clear, oh no, 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 he's the same I started guy. asking Our Lady of Sorrows, what am I seeing, right? And then it just clicked, I think she gave me the grace. So in the next session, I referred to him as the third personality of Satan. And, and all of a sudden, boom, he just stopped, he was stunned. And it was kind of, it was kind of one of those Hollywood couldn't produce kind of expression. And I said, was the trifurcation of your personality the punishment for wanting to be God? He, he said, yes, it was. And I said, and wow. Lucifer is the second personality of Satan, the inversion of Christ who's light from light, because Lucifer means light bearer, and he said, yes. And Satan is the inversion of the first personality because he's the father of lies. Basically, God split his personality as a punishment. A continuación, el padre Ripperger nos explica el motivo de la caída de los demonios Isis y Satanás. 
One of the things we know is that every single demon fell in relationship to Christ, but under a specific aspect. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the demon Isis fell because he would not accept Christ's mercy for men. And that's one of the reasons why, whenever you have him in a case, the level of cruelty, because it's the inversion of Christ's mercy, the level of cruelty is just astounding. Um, wow. So they all fell in relationship to Christ under some particular aspect. So, um, according to St. Louis Medrompfort, which actually bears itself out, at least in my experience in, in caseload, is that he fell in relationship to Christ under the aspect of Our Lady. He would not accept that there would be a woman who would outstrip him in grace, so much so that her grace would outstrip all intelligent creatures combined. Hmm. And he was, he said, I always knew once I saw her, I would be second best. El Padre nos cuenta también que la Santísima Virgen María es extremadamente poderosa y que un demonio le dijo que su poder radicaba en su humildad. Además, afirma que todo exorcista con algo de experiencia no puede dejar de desarrollar gran amor y devoción por la Madre de Dios. Si Our Lady shows up, two, one of two things is going to happen. The first is there's going to be a significant shift in the possession which means the demon's going to be much weaker, something's going to come out, it's that, 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 that you're probably going to be, it's going to speed things up significantly, or they're just going to be gone. So in about 70% of the cases that I've had, um, it's Our Lady that shows up that ultimately liberates. What will happen is, is that the person who's possessed will see, all of a sudden Our Lady will just appear, the abyss will open up, they feel the demon getting ripped out, it goes down, the abyss they closes. They feel it. They feel it being ripped down. And then they close. And a part of that, I think, is because God wants to confirm to them, you're liberated. He's gone. Wow. And then Our wow. Lady just disappears. She literally doesn't have to say a thing. Only in one case did she actually tell the demon, it's time. That's it. Hasta el momento se ha establecido que la caída de los ángeles está relacionada con una tarea específica que cada uno de ellos tenía en relación a Cristo. Esta tarea es la naturaleza misma del ángel. Es su identidad pero los demonios la rechazaron por no querer renunciar a un bien menor que comprendieron que existía, pero que no correspondía a su naturaleza. Rechazaron poner la voluntad de Dios por encima de la de ellos mismos. Entonces la pregunta es ahora, ¿cuál era la tarea de Lucifer? ¿Qué rehusó hacer? Desafortunadamente, el padre Ripperger dice que no está en libertad de hablar de ello sin el permiso de su obispo. Sin embargo, sí nos da una pequeña idea. He, he's obviously the bearer of light, so his original function was to enlighten our minds. Um, we know that that's part of it. Um, the saints haven't really chimed in too much on it. He has told me, but I'm not at liberty yet to speak about it. El padre también nos cuenta algo más que le reveló el cebu con respecto a la Virgen María, como siempre por orden de Dios. At a certain point. He, he, he said, once I saw her, she was so beautiful that he said, I also knew I'd be second. It's just in the sheer, her sheer beauty. He's talking about her interior beauty. So at a certain point, I said, well, that's a pretty broad statement. Yeah. So I tell him, well, what about her beauty? It was mm -hmm. the purity of it. I'm like, okay, that's pretty broad too. What about the purity of her love, was it? And, or purity, and he said, it was the purity of her love. And I said, well, even that's a broad statement, what was that? And he said it was that when she sacrificed herself, she never once counted the personal cost. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why God's love for her is different than it is for anybody else. He loves all of us, obviously, but it's different, and there's a specific reason for it. So, a little bit later in the section, he said it wasn't just that the fact she didn't count the personal cost, it was the perpetuity of her sacrifice. And what he revealed was is that through her whole life, She sacrificed herself over and over and over again to God without ever once taking herself into the equation of the sacrifice. <sighs> and so what that means is the reason she's different from everybody else is because all human beings, we count the personal cost. Constantly. So that means we're different That means we're different from her. They only got one opportunity to sacrifice, where she did it over and over and over again. And he said it was because of the, in fact, he even said, he said, His anger with God was the fact that he had, um, his anger with God was over the fact that he only got one shot and she got all these opportunities to sacrifice herself. 
So he said to him, I said, well, you couldn't even do it once. <laughs> yeah. And he, of course he gets angry. But the other part of it was that it was also very revelatory. So I, I realized that his big beef in this uh, possession case was Our Lady under the tile of speculum used to say the mirror of justice. Mm. So she's the mirror of God who's justice itself. Right? Wow. So I said to him, I said, what you really saw in her was him, wasn't it? I'm referring to God. Wow. She was this perfect reflection wow. of God, the Father specifically. And he said, yes, that's why I wanted to die. Because I wanted that beauty for myself. Wow. Es muy importante que este tipo de contenido no se quede en sensacionalismos. Si Dios ha permitido que se nos revelara este conocimiento hasta ahora oculto, es porque lo necesitamos. Entonces veamos qué quiere Dios de nosotros. Por un lado, que nos alejemos del orgullo que perdió a los demonios. Es imperativo que seamos humildes en medio de una sociedad con egos del tamaño de catedrales. Pero sobre todo, ante estos tiempos oscuros que vivimos, tenemos que intentar seguir el camino que anduvo la Santísima Virgen. Hacer el esfuerzo de servir sin importar lo que nos cueste. Nuestras vidas le pertenecen a Dios y nuestra voluntad debe ir unida a la suya. Cada oportunidad de sacrificarnos por Dios es un regalo inmenso que el diablo nos envidia y por el cual nos odia. Si te gustó este video, no olvides darle like, compartirlo con tus amigos y suscribirte a nuestro canal. Si no te gustó, te agradecemos haberlo visto hasta el fin. 